is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Morgan Knudsen moves into an apartment with a friend from work, she feels life is just beginning. But the spirit of a lost child threatens the peace of their new home. Now, Morgan must risk everything to save those she loves from an entity dead set on destruction. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Edmonton, Canada, a trading post turned modern metropolis, known as the gateway to the north. But within this bustling city, other gateways exist to a dark, unholy realm. February 2003. Morgan Knudsen, now 20 years old, is a musician and aspiring composer. And until recently, she had no home of her own. I was going from place to place and house to house. It was terrible not having that place to say, this is my home. Six months earlier, her parents divorced and left the province. But Morgan decided to stay and find an apartment. I had nowhere to go. My extended family was not close. I was relying so much on my friends. Recently, Morgan found a job at a computer tech support center. But she still can't afford a place on her own. Bob Levesque also works at the tech center. All right, let's put that here. That was easy. Yeah, uh, move it a little to the right. He was very outgoing, very friendly, right. and we connected right off the bat. Just, just a tad more. Okay, wait. That, that's what. That's way too far. Go back a little bit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, sorry. You know what? It's perfect. That's good. All right. Majesty. <laughs> he was having roommate trouble as well. This is nice. yeah. So we thought, you know, let's start looking for a place together. They get lucky, finding the perfect apartment atop a four-story walk-up. And we both wear our hearts on our sleeves, so everything that we loved went out onto shelves, which made the place very special. Bob was in a really tough place. 
He had separated from his wife and hadn't seen his kids in months. That physical separation and distance was very, very difficult for him. Sorry, I've been feeling a little funny about this, but they're Wicca candles. Wicca? Like witches and warlocks? <laughs> That's the popular misconception. Wicca is a religion like any other. Only we honor the earth and nature. Most people look at it like it's a Dungeons and Dragons witchcraft. <laughs> don't worry, Bob. I'm agnostic. I don't care what you pray to. Good. You see, each candle has a special purpose and meaning. This one represents love. And this one, protection. Cool. Well, it was nice having something that represented an emotion and a feeling that I hadn't had for months. Now, come here. Welcome home, roommate. Bob was really the ideal roommate. I couldn't ask for a, an easier person to stay with. A few days later. Okay. Is No. Well, here, try it with your key. It was almost like somebody had the lock on the other side and wasn't allowing us to, to uh, undo it. Great. Is there somebody in there? Wait here. We heard noises like shuffling and footsteps. What's going on? Is it a burglar? shadows moving around, there, there was nothing. Or something. What? You just startled me, that's all. Oh. I guess the noise we were hearing was coming from the apartment next door. But the apartment next to us is empty. Oh, well, these old buildings just tend to sigh and creak. It's probably nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Later that night. Go to bed, Bob.
Sorry, I... I thought I heard something. I told you, these old buildings tend to creak. And sigh, right. I guess that's it. Mm-hmm. All right, good night. Good night. I wasn't sure what to make of it. It was very, very unnerving. Morgan and Bob have lived in their apartment for two weeks when they throw a small housewarming party. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess Silver isn't dead after all. Who knew you're so strong, Court? No, oh, she says that to all my slaves. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, Morgan, I wouldn't have needed your slaves to carry me up if you had moved into a building with an elevator. Morgan invites Stephanie Wirtz, a grad student and her best friend. In high school, me and Morgan, we hang out all the time. We became extremely close and still are. I consider her like a sister to me. I would like to propose a toast to the new apartment and new friends. And new possibilities. Courtney Clapper here. manages the tech center where Morgan and Bob work. The first time I met Morgan, she really stepped up and went above and beyond what I think normal people do in trying to assist other people in being the best they could be. These are um, possibly the most hideous things I've ever seen. Hey, these are my good luck charms. I can do these myself. She had almost a spark about her. So, who's got some dirt to dish? Hmm? Anybody? Well, I have been wondering who my roomie has been sneaking off to see the past couple of nights. Oh. <laughs> wow. I know you're trying to be quiet, but I can still hear your footsteps. Who's the lucky lady? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Which department does she work in? Oh, well, maybe it's just Morgan's wishful thinking, okay? Well, maybe somebody here is um, hoping for a late night rendezvous with you know who. Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Court is a friend and a supervisor at work. Oh, does she flirt with you there too, Court? I'm not flirting. <laughs> Hats off to the chef. Meal was excellent. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Were you serious about hearing footsteps at night? Because I wasn't lying, it's not me. Well, I believe you. I guess my ears are just playing tricks on me. <laughs> no, they're not. I've been hearing things too. And I've seen some things. The other night I saw what I think was a spirit. The spirit of a little eight-year-old boy. His name was Joseph. How do you know his name? He told me. He's come a couple of times. He talks to me. Look. I was concerned that maybe his subconscious was generating, I'd hate to say an imaginary friend, but something to replace that need to be with his children. I've never experienced anything like this before. Have you? It it didn't hurt you or, or no. scare you? No, not at all. I kind of felt sorry for him, actually. Wait. I've got an ID. I'll be right back. I couldn't knock out of my mind the occurrences that had happened earlier with the footsteps and the door lock. What if this is connected? According to Wicked Belief, Lighting this candle will bring a special sense of peace and harmony to the home. Many Wiccans believe sacred objects focus and strengthen their prayers. It'll unify us, you, me, Joseph. What if this boy is a 
spirit. The next morning. Hey, don't forget I got a doctor's appointment today. I'm off. I'll see you later at the office. Good luck, Bob. Those keys had not been on the hook. They had literally come out of nowhere. I've always been a little bit more of a skeptic than a believer, but I can't explain what just happened. there's a ghost in our apartment. A ghost? Yeah, or, or a spirit of some kind. It was a relief to me to be able to tell somebody that I knew without question would believe what I was telling them. Look, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Morgan? Morgan. Hey. Hey. I had a really good time last night, and I was wondering, uh, do you want to go out for drinks? Oh, I'd love to, but... I just made plans. Uh, Can I take a rain check? Sure, yeah. Um, have you seen Bob around? He had a doctor's appointment this morning, but I'm surprised he's not back by now. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, I've been thinking. I must have imagined it. I mean, the keys must have been there the whole time. What did Bob say? He didn't come in today. He had a doctor's appointment and wound up being out all day. Look, maybe it's not as crazy as it seems. I was watching this TV show today where this lady was talking about the supernatural. Okay, well, here. I taped it, okay? Sit down. Lorraine Warren has investigated the supernatural for 30 years. The spirit is attracted to our aura. The supernatural glow that surrounds our physical body, because that depicts the person that we really are. Yeah. Do you think this Lorraine Warren has a website? Maybe, yeah. I'll just check. Okay. Oh, we Animals. became admirers of Lorraine Warren's cases and investigative techniques. The cases that she's dealt with have always been very difficult and and very strenuous, yet she's pulled through them. We thought, because we had nowhere else to turn for advice, that Lorraine Warren might be our, our best bet. Lights! Should light. Having trouble? I think you got the whole candle thing covered. I need this one to light. Well, maybe the wick got wet somehow. This wick would not even accept the flame. He's diagnosed with cancer today. What? What did you say? I said blood cancer. Oh my god, Bob, I'm so sorry. 
You know what? I think I have a lighter. I was devastated. This could mean the end of a very close friend. Bob? Bob, I, I just... I'm really sorry. Not right now, please. Okay. Just, if you need to talk... Please! Please! <sighs> I don't know what to think. I mean, first Bob thinks he sees a little boy, and now I'm hearing things, seeing things. What are you thinking? I am thinking that this is the most fascinating first date of all time. <laughs> but seriously, do you believe in this stuff? Yeah. Why? I have my reasons. Ooh, a mystery girl. I like it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I will prove to you that there is a scientific explanation for all of this. And I will even get that candle of yours to light. Okay. I am actually certified oh my God. as a master candle lighter. One, two, see. Yeah. There's a special touch. Thanks, Mr. Pyromaniac, but the green candle is the one that won't light. Observe. We like the lighter. Huh. <laughs> Told you so. What just happened? Sparks were coming off this candle like a sparkler, and this was just a normal wick wax candle. What's going on with Bob? He's working through some issues. Oh. Then I better get going then. Well, then, uh, good night. Mystery girl. Bob? Not now. I wanted to be there for Bob as a friend, but he almost seemed to be losing himself talking to this little boy. You're not alone anymore. You're not alone. You always know what to say. The next morning. Yes, I know. Hard to believe. It's Bob in the flesh. Washed, dressed, and not foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Look, I even made coffee. Thanks. So you're feeling better? Oh, much. A decent meal in my stomach. Morgan is thankful for Bob's renewed oh. spirits. Well, good. He's even planned a boys. trip to visit his sons. I'm going up to Saskatchewan right after work today for the weekend. Oh, Bob, that's that's great. Yeah, and uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'll see you.
I didn't know if it was going to attack me. All I know is that it wanted me very scared. Something more than a child was in the house. Okay, sir, I think we fixed it. Now just hit restart. Bob, Bob, something happened. I was in the shower and, and these hands, these hands are pushing in no, on no, me. No, no, sir, don't look at any other keys just yet. Can you please hold? Sir, just, can you please hold? I think it was that Joseph. He was trying to threaten me. You can't possibly think it was Joseph. He's just a little boy. I, d I don't want to calm down. All I'm saying is, that could have been explained by an updraft of cold air. If you have hot water entering and it's a cold bathroom, the hot air rises and pulls in the shower curtain. So you're telling me you'd rather believe in this paranormal mumbo jumbo, why? Because it's happened before, okay? When I was a little girl, I woke up in the middle of the night I saw this white, opaque, transparent form. It scared me beyond anything that I, I have ever experienced since. Morgan, those were nightmares. Just forget it. Little girls me. have nightmares all the time. Just forget it. Here's this guy that's supposed to be my friend, and he ate doesn't believe me, and B is just being, you know, completely unsupportive. Morgan seeks the help of the one person she knows will understand. So what's up? I'm scared. I have an idea. Stephanie, she was fascinated by what was happening, but at the same time, she was worried this was a place that I had called my home, and she really knew what that meant to me. Did some research, and I really feel like we can prove that Joseph really exists, once and for all. How are we gonna do this? We don't have any high-tech equipment. Sure we do. Stephanie believes they can capture the disembodied voice of Joseph on tape. It's not much, but... What paranormal experts call an EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. Yeah, I think it'll be a little work. What was that? What was that? Did you hear that? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Say that She locked the front door. Of course. Are you sure? Yeah. No, seriously. I definitely felt like the spirit was directing its anger towards me. It was almost declaring a challenge. You know how you said most spirits aren't dangerous? I think this one is. You should do the honors. Who are you? How old are you? We're talking to the spirit that resides here. Did you knock over my figurine? How long have you been living Is there here? A reason you chose this apartment? What do you want from us? Show yourself to us. The process is slow and painstaking. We're talking to the spirit that resides here. What's your name? Did you knock over my figurine? We thought we were really onto something, that we'd, we'd be able to get some results. There, there was nothing. 
Morgan is nervous spending the night, but it's too late to call the neighbor who helped carry Stephanie up the stairs. I have one problem, though. I was able to get into her bed with not too much trouble, but we realized that we weren't going to be able to get me back out of the bed. Don't worry about it. We'll just we'll call court in the morning, OK? Only if we're desperate. <laughs> What's up, Bob? Maybe you came home early. I don't think so. Morgan, hold on. Morgan, what's going on? Morgan, I can't see you. Morgan! Morgan! Okay, call court. Steph and I were basically stuck. I didn't want to leave her sitting there because I knew it could lock the doors and I knew it would probably take that opportunity to get the two of us apart. Nobody's answering. From 1.35 to 6 o'clock the next morning, we listened to this thing open and slam the door. At dawn, Morgan reaches court, and together they take Stephanie home. I just think that it would be safer if you went away for a few days. I mean, do your parents live around here? Is there some place you can go so this all can cool down? So now you're a believer? I believe in you. This was my home. I just was not willing to give that up, whether we had to deal with a spirit or not. Everything seemed to be going against her. Now she actually had a chance to discover who she was. <laughs> hey. I got this on my trip. It's been specially blessed, so it'll light the peace candle for sure. You wanna see? Sure. Morgan recalls reading that changes in temperature, even merely striking a match, can generate spirit activity. Here we go. One, two, three. No way. The green candle lit without any sparking or hissing. It really made me wonder what is going on here. Bob, something happened last night. At work, his personality was completely different. At the apartment, Bob was quite eerie and odd. It, it was unsettling. Did you see if we got anything? I guess. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. <sighs> no way, it lit. And that scream was confirmation. We were dealing with something that, that was not a child. We really needed answers at this point. Hello, Miss Warren. This is Morgan Knudsen from Canada. Morgan contacts yeah, Lorraine right. Warren, the renowned paranormal investigator she'd seen on TV. Things are getting pretty worse. My my roommate, Bob, he's been acting... Morgan's description of the activity and Bob's obsession with Joseph send up a red flag to Warren. She knew immediately that it was not a human spirit. This was a front that this entity has put up in order to get itself into the house. Warren warns Morgan that she's not the entity's prime target. It's Bob. She's dealing with an individual who is under demonic possession. That person is not there. Something has taken over. <sighs> OK. Bob has fallen victim due to his emotional and physical distress. OK, well. The weakest, most vulnerable individual 
is the one who is going to come under possession. Warren tells Morgan that her only hope lies in spiritually fortifying herself and convincing Bob to renounce Joseph. Look, you don't have anywhere else to go. Come crash at my place tonight. Morgan appreciates the offer, but isn't ready to give up on her roommate. I wanted to be there for Bob. He didn't have anywhere to go or anybody to take care of him. He's gone, huh? Good. If Bob refuses help, Warren fears the worst. It was inevitable. There was going to be a tragedy in that home. Morgan's only hope for Bob is to follow Lorraine Warren's advice. Bob, I know how to make things right again. We have to get a priest. No. You have to know that you're not the same as you used to be. You know, while a cancer diagnosis will do that to you. That's, that's not it. I bet your boys noticed it. Don't you say anything about this! There's something dark, evil, and scary going on, and you know it! All right, all right, if I do it, will you shut up? All right, here we are. Come on. Come on. I'm not going in there. Oh, just, just come inside. I'm not doing this. Bob. Distraught but determined, Morgan meets with a Catholic priest. To repel evil, he suggests displaying symbols of God throughout the house and reciting the prayer of St. Benedict, patron saint of the poisoned. The priest regrets not helping more, but for that, he would need to meet with Bob. What are you? Some kind of Jesus freak now? I'm gonna say this once. Take it down! This isn't me. I have all this anger in me and I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe if you, you just ignore this Joseph just for one night, then maybe... There you go again, talking about things you know nothing about! What is it gonna take to get through to you? <laughs> I was greatly concerned for Bob, but I had to start looking at myself and the idea that I needed to get out. But before Morgan leaves for good, she resolves to follow through with the priest's advice. Several nights later, she persuades Court to recite the prayer of St. Benedict with her. Come on. Oh, 
glorious Saint Benedict, sublime model of all virtues, behold me, humbly kneeling at All virtues, behold me, humbly kneeling at thy feet. To thee I have recourse in all dangers which... Did you hear that? Let's keep going. Shield me against my enemies. Inspire me to imitate thee in all things. To live and die as a faithful child of God. And to attain the eternal happiness of heaven. Amen. Okay, we need to get out of here. Wait. two weeks, Morgan stays with court. Well, we at least agreed on one thing. I move in here. But Morgan still must retrieve her belongings, leaving court worried. You sure about this? Absolutely. You will wait for my call, right? I will. Okay. Bob was definitely demonstrating hostility and anger, and I had no way of knowing to what degree that would escalate to. Make sure your phone's turned on. personal business. Thank you. Oh, and here are the new forms we're supposed to use from now on. Okay. Where's Bob? I don't know. It's weird. He just took off. When? About an hour ago. Still think he's sick? I need to make a phone call.
me somewhere. Bob, I wanted to tell you. You come in here, sneaking around. No, I still care about you. I want to help you, but I I can't anymore. If you would just let go of Joseph, he's not who you think he is. He's not some little boy who needs you. Of course he doesn't need me. I need him. with you. Just never liked him. But you already know that. twisted limbs. This is the little boy. This is Joseph. I left with knowing there is nothing more I could have done. Bob stops showing up at work. Soon after, he moves out of the apartment, leaving no forwarding address. It has been four years, and Morgan and Court's relationship continues to grow. Morgan and Stephanie remain friends. They are also colleagues, having formed Entity Seeker, an agency that helps those endangered by the paranormal. Take a look at the house. There are people that need help that don't feel that there are resources anywhere to get some answers. This incident has really helped me relate to them. And I know that they're feeling when they're faced with something like this. In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. Cindy Sarah and her family move back to her hometown, hoping for a better life. But something sinister lurks in the shadows, waiting to make its move. Desperate to protect her children from something she cannot see, she becomes caught in a supernatural nightmare she cannot escape. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Even the most innocuous places bear the scars of a twisted past. Evil can echo through time lying dormant until the unsuspecting and the ill-prepared unknowingly cross its path. On the outskirts of St. Louis sits the township of Belleville, Illinois, like many small cities and towns that dot the Midwest landscape, it has remained the same for decades. The year is 1991. 34-year-old Cindy Sarrow has lived in the small town for the past two years. Tonight, Cindy can't shake the feeling that something is wrong.
I just thought it was a nightmare. But then I kept having it over and over, the same dream. In my dreams, I was fearing for my life. And I knew that whatever this was, was trying to kill me. I just felt it. Even though I knew that it was a nightmare, I checked through the house and checked on the children to make sure everything was okay and that they were safe. stay-at-home mom. She has two children, seven-year-old Christy and nine-year-old Brooke. Me and my family are really close, and it seemed that nothing could tear us apart. When's daddy gonna get here? He's taking forever. He'll be here in just a few minutes. Honey, relax and eat your breakfast. I can't. I'm too excited about the surprise. What do you think it is? I have no idea. But I bet whatever it is, it's wonderful. That's home. Cindy's longtime boyfriend, Jake, works the graveyard shift at a chemical plant in St. Louis. How are my little ladies today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hi, honey. Everyone ready for my big surprise? Today? What? <laughs> what is it? Well, you know how we've been wanting to move back to Caseyville? Closer to your mother, closer to work for me. What is it? Tell us, Daddy. What's the big surprise? Girls, go get dressed, and I'll show you. I think, I think I found that dream home. Both Cindy and Jake grew up in Caseyville, a rural town at the base of the Mississippi River Bluffs. For months, they've talked about moving back to their hometown and raising their family there. Uh-huh. Come on. Up to. Huh? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, what do you think? I love it. Yeah. I do, too. Uh-huh. How many bedrooms does it have? Oh, just two. But look at all this land. This is all our land. Just think of the things we can do with it. Plus, your mom lives right down the road, so you can see her whenever you want. It is a great location. Well, let's go inside and take a look. Hmm? <laughs> this was a good time. Be careful, you two. So, what do you think? It's nice. I really like it. But do we have the money for a place like this? Barely, but yes. It was a house that we could afford, but we were really financially strapped. A lot of money. There was things that needed to be done to the house. We would have to come up with the money for that. It sounds like it's gonna take a lot of money and a lot of work. I know, honey, I know, but there aren't a lot of houses up for sale right now, and it might be years before we get another chance like this. Now, you've always talked about how much you've wanted to raise our family here, and it really is a great house. It is a great house. Yeah? Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we were real excited. We weren't running. We would have our own home and just be happy. Isn't that great? All right. Well, we can fit our TV right through there. Mom, what are you doing here? Cindy is grateful to be near her ailing mother, Anita, who suffers from a degenerative disease. I'm here. 
She was sick and she was getting sicker and I just wanted to be close to her to be able to help her and be with her. I'll get the rest of the boxes. You should start unpacking. That's a great idea. Mm. Thanks, honey. The hinges on these doors are just a little too old. I had doubts about the house. Don't worry, I'll fix them. I thought, what did I buy here? Guess you're right. I should expect things like this to happen. It is a pretty old house. Exactly. Now, where did I put my tools? That night, Cindy helps her daughters set up their new room. bedroom had a very eerie feeling to it. I just had a horrible feeling that something was wrong with the house. Whoa, where are you running off to? What's the matter? Because I wasn't sure myself about what was going on. We had just moved there, that I didn't want to worry her. It's OK, honey. You can tell me. I don't like my room, Mom. What do you mean? It's a great room. It's perfect for you guys. I don't know. There's something creepy about it. I can't sleep in there. I don't want to sleep in there either. Oh, you guys don't have to be scared. Your father and I will be right here with oh, you. Oh, no! Whoa. Too old to be acting like this. I expect more from you. But, Daddy! No buts, okay? Now, that's where you girls are sleeping, and that's final. Can you do it for me? Okay, I'll do it. That's my girl. Thank you, honey. It's time for you to take a bath. Brooke, you're up first. Come on, girls. I 
had turned on the faucets to find a black substance pouring out. It just looked really nasty. Oh my God! Jake! Look at the water, it's black. Well, looks like nobody's used this bathroom for a long time. I was very upset. There was a lot of things that we had to fix in the house. Things kept going wrong. I'll be in in just a few minutes to tuck you in. Okay. You know what, why don't you take a break and relax? I'll put the girls to bed. Okay, All right. sounds good. Okay. Thanks, honey. first time, Cindy has a sudden revelation. I couldn't believe it. It was the same stairs that are in my nightmares. <laughs> I was really afraid. But what could I do? Cindy knows that Jake would never consider moving because of an eerie feeling. <sighs> you okay? Look like you've seen a ghost. Yeah, I'm okay. Just a little tired, that's all. All right. You ready for work? Yeah. In fact, I'm a little late. Do you think maybe you could play hooky? You know, maybe call in sick or something? What, are you getting freaked out too? It's no wonder Brooke and Christy don't want to sleep in their room. Like mother, like daughters. You'll be okay, all right? If you need me, give me a call at work. If you don't, I'll see you in the morning. like every hour I was waking up. I had this feeling that someone was there watching me, but I couldn't see anyone. The following week, a repairman discovers the source of Cindy's electrical problem. Thank you. And he checked all the wires, and he told me that somebody had purposely turned the wiring around in the box. A few weeks later, Cindy finally begins to feel settled in her new home.
Come on, girls. You have your own beds. You can use your nightlight. The electrician fixed everything. Why don't you sleep in our room? Because your bed's too small. Now, come on, let's go. But, Mom, I can't. Please. I couldn't go back in there. I couldn't sleep in there. You know, I was afraid, really. I, I think that's what it comes down to. I was just really afraid. All right, I'll sleep on the sofa. But sooner or later, this has got to end. Good night. Good night, Mom. Good night, baby. Cindy fears that someone may have broken into the house. I was afraid for my children and myself because we were home by ourselves. I heard a noise. <laughs> you really scared me. <laughs> I know. You jumped like 10 feet in the air. <laughs> All right. Now you need to get to bed. Night, Mom. The following night, Cindy calls her mother Anita to see how she's feeling. She lives in a one-bedroom apartment across town. I don't know what happened, and all of a sudden, my head started to spin. Should I stop by your place? I appreciate the offer. Don't bother, honey. Yeah, I think what I need is just a rest for a while. OK, sounds good. Well, um, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. OK, sure. Is everything all right? Mom, I think that the house is... Cindy? Oh, look, Mom, everything's fine. I gotta go. all the strange things occurring in the house. Oh, no! 
Cindy begins to have trouble sleeping. to sleep because I just felt there was somebody staring at me. I knew somebody was there, but I couldn't see them. I could just feel their presence. The next morning, Cindy is on edge. She begins to wonder if the house is haunted. Jake, don't do that! I'm sorry, just trying to give you a good morning hug. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit jumpy. Anything you want to talk about? No, no, I'm just tired. You know, why don't we do something this weekend? You know, just me and you. Really? Yeah. I'll ask Mom to watch the kids. Okay, it's a date then. Thank you, honey. I am going back to bed. I'll be outside gardening if you need me. I was pushed so hard that I went down. hesitant to tell Jake what just happened. She can barely believe it herself. Jake, wake up. Jake, <clears throat> there's something wrong with this place. Not the electricity again. No, it's not that. Jake, I don't think I can live here. Oh, now look, honey, I, I know there's been a lot of repairs lately, but that'll end. I just don't feel safe. And I don't think the girls feel safe either. Well, I can get an alarm system if you want. But... I don't want an alarm system. I want a different house. Oh, Cindy, Cindy, come on. Don't be ridiculous. We just moved in. How can I tell somebody what's going on here when it's so bizarre, everything that was happening, you know? Who's going to believe it? You know we can't afford it. I know you're not too thrilled with the house, but just give it some time. Please? I don't think I can. Fine. Please, fill me in on how you plan to come up with all this money. I don't know, but I'll figure it out. That upset me because we lived in Belleville and they always got along and now it seemed that my mother and father were fighting a lot. Come on, girls. Later that night, Jake is at work. Cindy feels desperately alone. She is unable to find a way to tell Jake what's going on without sounding crazy. She also doesn't want to alarm the children. Mom, is everything OK with you and Dad? Oh, honey, everything is fine. Don't you worry, OK? Okay. Did you finish your homework? Almost. 
Okay. Well, I'll be up there in a few minutes to look it over. Okay. Cindy wants to move, but she knows that she and Jake can't afford it. We weren't rich people, then I just didn't have money to move. I would have to uproot the children again. They were already in school. It would just disrupt everybody's life. Weeks pass, and the strange activity continues. Although Cindy is not a religious person, she begins to pray on a regular basis. She wonders if she can find comfort in her faith. I put up a picture of Jesus. I felt like that was protection for us. Cindy. Cindy, come here. What is it, Jake? Slow down, slow down. Take a deep breath. Tell me. There's a ghost in this house. Come on, honey. Tell me the truth. Just tell me what happened. No, I'm being serious, Jake. There's something here, and it's trying to hurt me. Sweetie, there's, there, there's just us. <laughs> it's just in your imagination. No, you're not listening to me. There's something in this house, and it's trying to kill me. And you don't even care. Of, of course I care, but... Try to be reasonable here, Cindy. There, there's nothing in this house. I can't live here. Jake, it tried to suffocate me. Cindy, this house is not haunted, okay? Ghosts do not exist. I wish I never let you convince me to buy this house. Are you kidding me? You wanted this house as much as I did. What's gotten into you lately? Huh? Jake, I'm no, scared. No, 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 no. We, we sunk our life savings into this house. We are not moving, and that's final. I couldn't take it anymore. I needed help. I started calling different churches, and nobody wanted to help me. Finally, I spoke with a priest, and he was going to help me. In the nearby town of Belleville... My life's falling apart, Father. I just don't know what to do. Cindy meets with Father Thomas. From what you've told me, it appears as though it may be demonic. The first step is to bless the house. That may drive the demon out. But I need some time to prepare. I'll have to fast and pray before I can actually conduct the blessing. I understand, Father. I'm so grateful for your help. Here. When you're afraid, read Psalm 91. It will protect you from evil. Thank you again, Father.
That night, Cindy anxiously waits for Jake to come home. She keeps herself calm by reading the Bible. I was relieved to see the police when they came. It was like, thank God. Put your hands behind your head. He had chopped the door down with the axe. Thank God they made it in time before he did whatever he was out to do. Tell me what happened here. Jake, I, I don't know, he just, he didn't look right. Cindy believes that Jake was possessed. Do you want to take charges out on him? She now knows it was Jake who tried to suffocate her. Oh. <laughs> Man. Uh, I'll think about it. Cindy does not press charges believing that Jake's will was not his own. But she does not allow him back into the house. He moves in with his mother. An hour later, the girls return from their movie. the door, Mom. What's wrong, Mom? It's gonna have to go away for a while. Why? It's really complicated. But I'm trying to fix things. And maybe in a few weeks, things will be normal again. Dad's not gonna be here at all. When I found out that my dad wasn't gonna be around, I was really upset because we were really close. And it just seemed like since we moved into the house, our whole family was falling apart. Well, don't you worry. Everything is going to be fine. I promise. Now, go wash up. I'll be up in a few minutes to tuck you in. It's me. I need your help. I can't explain it right now, but I need to stay at your place. 
I just need to grab a few things and get the girls. Oh, good, honey, you're up. Can you please go wake up your sister? We're gonna go over and stay at Grandma's. You are nothing. No one can help you. Christy, I know you're in there. Christy, mommy. Oh, my God. It was her body, but it wasn't her voice. Come on, we're getting out of here. We're gonna get out of here. Cindy and the girls flee to Anita's one-bedroom apartment. It possessed Jake and he tried to attack me. And now Christy. Oh I can't go back there. What if I tries to hurt the girls? I was so and relieved that they were safe. You need to. You make it work. And that we weren't going back to the house. The Lord is my refuge and my fortress my God, in whom I trust. I will not fear the terror that attacks by night or the arrow that flies by day. No affliction will enter my house. He will give his angels reign over me to keep me safe. He is I started salvation. reciting Psalms 91. I felt like I was being protected, like God was with me and he was gonna help me. There's no house there where my house should have been. I didn't understand it. I just knew I was in a different time. That was an answer to my prayer telling me something had went on years and years ago. The next day, Cindy goes to Father Thomas to tell him about her dream. These men were performing a ceremony that had something to do with the dead. They were digging up a body where my house now stands. It sounds as though you witnessed a ritual of necromancy. That's a form of summoning a, a spirit, a demon, or a human soul to enter a corpse. But why? Well, there are several reasons, but mainly the goal is to conjure up a demon, which explains the demonic presence in your home. I'll be able to perform the house blessing tomorrow. Thank you. But I'm going to ask you to do something you may not like. Anything, Father. I just want this to end. I need you and the girls to be present while I perform the blessing. You must confront the demon in order to send him to the other side. Well, I guess I have no other choice. I really didn't want any of us in the house. I would have much rather handed him the key and let him do it, but it couldn't be done that way. Father Thomas knows that a demon is highly unpredictable. It has already manifested itself in different ways. Hi, Father Thomas. Peace be to this house and with all who live here. Lord God of heaven and earth, bless this house and all who inhabit it. I was still scared, but I kept praying. I didn't want anybody hurt. And 
I just wanted this to be over with. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God of heaven and earth, bless this house and all who inhabit it. Fill them with the light of Christ, that their concerns for others may reflect your love. We ask through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fill them with the light of Christ, that their concerns for others may reflect your love. We ask through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I can't thank you enough, Father. Of course, my dear. I'll always be here for you in your time of need. Thank you. I felt relieved that we finally had our house and there was no evil. That night, Cindy and the girls moved back into the house. I felt my hair rise on my neck. Something grabbed me. Cindy and the girls stay with her mother while she tries to sell the house. Cindy and Jake are unable to bridge the rift between them and decide to go their separate ways. Cindy begins working at a local hotel and eventually saves enough money to purchase a new home. Jake maintains a relationship with Brooke and Christy, seeing them on weekends. Over time, Cindy and her daughter's lives become peaceful once more. But memories of their horrifying ordeal continue to haunt them. Going through this experience it made me believe that there is evil out here. We have nightmares still. 15 years later, it'll always be with us. But uh, we're getting stronger about things. The house remains empty for quite some time until a couple from out of town buys the place. Within a few months, their daughter encounters an evil presence and the family quickly moves out. 